Good. Okay, so today I'm talking to um, Caroline Griffiths. It's Jennifer Lynch here from Natural Co-Creators and Caroline is a spiritual dog trainer, which is very fascinating. I've known Caroline a number of years since I met her um, when she did Inspired Events and she used to have a website in Spiral Events as well, which did all sorts of wonderful things. Um, and I also met her through my friend Detta Darnell, who put some workshops and things in Catalonia and is a very creative lady. So I think that's where I first met you, through Detta. I was trying to stretch my mind further than that, but I, I couldn't remember. But I do remember attending some of your spiritual events in Cambridge. Um, that's quite a while ago now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um... Wow, God, 10 years maybe, do you think, or seven? <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah. I think it was quite a while ago now. Yes. So we will see, we will see. And so what is interesting, in, interesting now is that you seem to have moved completely into the dog world, <laughs> world of dogs. Everything is about dogs with you now, isn't it? Well, it always has been, actually. The group that I ran, yeah, I mean, my own spiritual journey um, has involved dogs, but it was dogs for me first. Right. I left school, and then it was a hobby for me to be running the events, the spiritual events. But what I've come to realise is that dogs are part of humanity's ascension journey, and they have, they've basically been with us every step of the way on our journey through the eons wow. of time even wow. to the point where they are connected to us galactically as well and the energy centers that we have um you know where we may have come from if we're star seeds that kind of thing they're very connected um, they have the biggest heart per body mass of any creature on the planet oh good grief yeah which is a veterinary fact um mm -hmm. so essentially they of all creatures are the ones that can really feel our subconscious right. so they they feel what's happening for us and they're able to display that for us in terms of becoming a mirror to our subconscious for us so that it gives us an idea of what it is that we might have to work on what we might have to clear in order to ascend even further and live our purpose really so they're very intricately linked in with spirituality so it's kind yeah. of a good thing that i blended the two in the end to create what I'm doing now um, which which is a, it's called canine flow and it's a system of integrating spirituality into dog care so it's like the next step from animal healing that it goes beyond animal communication um, it integrates natural dog care but it but it's beyond what we've been doing so far so there's a lot to do with humanity's ascension where we're going on this planet and, and how dogs are, are really lighting the way for us and how we being more mind-based creatures we have not necessarily always wanted to become heart-based creatures and if we did we had the desire and we we sort of thought that was the right thing to do so yes i want to do it we then had to uncover what was in our way so we had to release our heart blocks we had to release um the 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 beliefs and the limiting beliefs that are surrounding in our subconscious which is linked to our hearts so our dogs are really there to show us how to do that and and being more mind-based we've tried to put our mind-based view of the world onto our dog only naturally because that's the only way that we saw things so now we're becoming more heart-based creatures it's far easier to see that a dog doesn't mentally choose to be aggressive or mentally mean anything personally against you against you and they're not mentally working out how to be better than you or higher up the pack or anything like that there's they're very basic simple loving heart-based creatures mm -hmm. they don't have the agendas that we have in the past been sort of seeing in them really because we weren't ready humanity wasn't ready and we're part of this collective consciousness we weren't ready to let that go mm. but now we are becoming more ready to let that go we can start to see well actually yeah you know if we're really going to be living in our hearts 
why not learn from creatures who literally act with their huge magnetic heart in every moment mm. Yeah, it's definitely been my experience of dogs, although I've always had dogs that have been a little bit tricky. <laughs> I've always but attracted that's the to idea, them that's the me. idea. <laughs> yeah, well, in a sense, what they're doing is showing you something in you which needs to clear. Yeah. And what I found, so I've been doing this work on a more official level um, in terms of it being labelled canine flow for about four years, but I've been doing this work for over 10 years. Um, and I didn't create it into a course or something other people could learn until about four years ago. But they, they will come to us and show us what's happening for us. And what I find time and time again is when we clear those subconscious limiting beliefs or when we clear that energy block in our hearts or that heart wall, the dog's behavior changes. Mm. No training needed. No analyzing the psychology of the dog's mind is yeah. ever needed. Yeah. They're not even connected mind to mind to you. It's a heart-based thing with dogs. It's right. phenomenal. They literally change when you change. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this dog has been the most loving dog. And I feel that, you know, he wants to do things rather than feeling that he has to do things he seems to just want to do things you know but there has to be that trust developed between us I think really and that that has been well because he's a springer um he's very very lively but also I noticed that the I say things to him I talk to him like he's a human being okay so <laughs> I don't think he's a dog he is a dog but if I say something to him and I say, yeah, that's right, isn't it, Barney? Or I talk to him as if he's a human and then I think he completely understands it. And I assume he understands it because he seems like he understands it. And um, he responds to, I know they say that you mustn't give them too many different commands and words. But I've never actually found that a problem. I sort of think that he seems to know an awful lot of words. <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, words come with a resonance and a feeling. And I think yeah. we underestimate or don't even realize how much when we're talking to someone else, the language is almost irrelevant, yeah. how they come across and what you get from the sense of yeah. the word and the feeling is just mm. as equally important. And they're getting all that all the time. Mm. No matter what language you talk to your dog, they will always mm. know how you feel as you say it. Oh, no, but so it totally it, makes yeah. sense that he would be connected with you in that way. Yeah, one of the things he's doing, because I told you he chased the cat and that was a bit of a problem, but recently he's run into his dog cage with his bone. I've said to him, Barney, I want to cuddle the cat. And he says, cuddle the cat, okay. I'll go in my dog cage while she cuddles the cat and then I'll come out again later. And it's quite voluntary, he's doing it. He's just saying, I don't have a problem. You go cuddle the cat. I'll sit here with my bones yeah. while you do that. And that's yeah. amazing because, you know, if I say the cat to him, he, you know, he just, you know, seems to know the cat, who he is, you know, what he does. And <laughs> Yeah, where the cat sort of fits into the relationship. Yes, yeah. he does. Yeah. Yes. And like you say, they don't really get on, but that's because he's, he, he has to keep running and chasing him and he won't keep still and yeah i've tried all sorts so anyway it's all right we're managing we're managing so that's the main thing yeah i mean the thing is what we have to remember about having a magnetic heart is you're attracted to things and you're looking to ground your emotions out yeah what a dog yeah. is always trying to do is give its energy out to, to somebody or something yeah. usually they're trying to give their energy to us but in this case he's obviously the cat is setting up this idea that he's going to be able to ground his energy on the cat yeah. so magnetically he's going to be attracted to the cat and it could be yeah. partly the cat's energy as well you see yeah so there's you know that nature that is kind of how nature has them that's the reason yeah. why they have the biggest heart per body mass and the reason why they're so capable of feeling this electromagnetic energy and this yeah. love is because they've got a prey drive because they're supposed to be giving energy out. And one of the 
well, the best ways really that we've discovered um, for working with dogs, not not in canine flow, I mean, just as humanity in general, is what we what they call canine enrichment. And of course, canine enrichment is described as mentally tiring the dog. But what's actually happening is you're giving the dog sometimes the only opportunity it ever gets that day or that week or however often you do it I'd say the more the merrier but the only opportunity they get to really give their energy out they usually give their energy out with um, their feet or their mouth mainly so when they're allowed to really ground those emotions out they become very content and Mm. calm and it's actually nothing to do with the mental or the mind side Mm. because if you were to stimulate the mind Mm. or the the mental capacity what you'd find is you have a very agitated dog it happens with children as well you know if you ask them to do their homework just before bed they're Mm. less likely to sleep than if you ask them to go and play in the garden just before bed. You know, when they really emotionally ground out in that way, it's a heart-based activity and and Mm. it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I'm sure that's what's happening, of course. He's taking the bone off. He's emotionally grounding Mm. to be able then to be in a position where he's got no excess energy because he's grounding out this emotion so he can cope with you then being with the cat instead of him. <laughs> mm, yeah. And we've got this sort of like pouring thing going on. Like where he, if I'm asleep, he sleeps on the bed and he comes up and he's like, time to get up, pad, pad with his paw on my shoulder. And, you know, to say, I want to go out now. You know, uh, he, you yeah, know he doesn't yeah. bark. He stopped barking. He never really barked to go out in the first place. It's sort of like indicating what he wants rather than barking which is quite yeah. interesting as well yeah i mean he's he's communicating with you differently isn't mm. he yeah yeah he is yeah anyway so tell us about your um retreat that you've got coming up i, I see it's nearly booked which is incredible but maybe you've got a follow-up one as well um well i well i was doing them twice a year and they've got so busy i'm now doing them four times a year wow. so The April one's completely full. The May one has two spaces um, and I will properly release the September dates when I can. But because I'm about to take on a a job, a different job, because I'm back in England now, I just need to sort of see how I get on with that and and then where I can fit it all in. So, yeah, yeah, um, really the May one is the best one to come on because I've still got the two spaces. And what that means is I've actually got two rooms and one of the rooms is actually okay for people to share. So if somebody Mm -hmm. wants to come with their family or their partner or they just Mm -hmm. want to come with their best mate, we can put them into twins. Um, So in theory, there's the opportunity for three people to come, but it's only two rooms. And the dogs will stay in the room with you as well. Okay. So they, I, I've That's been nice. running them. I've been running them over ten years. This is actually wow. 12, twenty. That's I don't right. know where the time's gone. <laughs> no, neither really do great. I. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought when you went to Cyprus, you weren't coming back again, and then you appeared as if from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I, I think somehow I'm being drawn back. To yeah, wonderful. So well, the numbers I, are so strong, aren't they? I mean, twenty twenty, the yes. two two is a master number in your yes, life. Yes, exactly. And apparently, um, the twenty second of February is going to be a very powerful day. I found out as well. And oh, I've actually three got twos. a writers' retreat of well, not a writers' retreat, a writers' meetup on that on that day. Not everybody could make the retreat, but I've make, made the group meeting. So that feels quite empowering as well to introduce new members and try and spread their writers groups out as well, which is really good. So I was just going to say to you, I will put the link to your workshops um, under the interview on natural co-creators, but people can see more about your work on your website, can't they? The spiritualdogtrainer.com. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So essentially the opportunity tutors with a PAW. Um, I can do readings um, of the energy of situations around behaviours and of what it might be that your dog is trying to express that 
may have been previously mostly limited to things. Yeah, like your voice is dipping out a tiny bit, Caroline. Can you just sort of up the volume if possible? <laughs> yeah, um, probably just means talking louder. <laughs> yeah, talk louder. <laughs> okay, so readings yeah. with my cards, which I channeled from the sacred canine heart. Wow. Um, kind of like a collective consciousness galactically yeah. um, linked with Sirius the dog star. So wow. do readings with these for people um, and really support you as well in terms of diet with your dog, because mm -hmm. I do have two books out about um, raw dog food and, and real oh, food. I prefer to call it real food because cooked is good as well. All right. Um, so I can, I can do that. Um, also, I have uh, hypnotherapy audios. If you, if if people just want something they can tap into, they can just use instantly as a behaviour support. Mm -hmm. the POW, then um, yeah, they can they can grab one of those from the website. The hypnotherapy audios they're just downloadable. Um, I have free meditations on the website as well. Free. Mm -hmm. um, I have four free gifts, and one of the gifts is a book about your dog's multidimensional potential. So I love that word, potential, incredible. <laughs> everything's poor. You can fit poor in as much. As um, and obviously, places on the retreat. And if they are keen, if if, if people are keen to learn this process, yeah. with dogs, um, and become a practitioner themselves and share this way of viewing dogs and dog mm -hmm. um, and also in, enlighten and empower humanity at the same time. So wow. really, it's sharing the dog's message. That's what we're really doing in this. Um, I love it. I love it. Heart ascension. Then yeah, that, that's feasible too. But yeah, all the information is on the website. <laughs> mm, okay. So I'm not sure how much longer we've got because <clears throat> it says half an hour, but apparently when you're only talking to one person, it can go on a lot longer. So let's try the cards then. <laughs> let's try let's try the cards and see if you've got any message for me and my dog. Is that possible? Oh yes. Oh, we've definitely got time for that. So it's you and Barney. I don't know if you've got a pack of these cards. You can get them in that shop in Ely. She I nearly bought them. I was just on the way out and I, I had to an event where they had them. I had my hand on them and I said, I want to get these dog cards. And then my friend was just kept moving on. So I'm like, oh, I'll get them next time I see them. I need to go back there. I went yesterday and unfortunately the store was closed until the 11th, it said, I think. Oh, right, yeah. And I have to go back in because I think they've sold out. So I'll go oh, back in. Oh, right. I'm going to cut the pack. Do you want the left or the right? Do you want this I one? feel, I feel the, the, the <laughs> your left. Your left. That one, yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see. What, oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> because you said... You said about trust. Yeah. You. So wow. you've got the trust card. And you said that you feel like you're learning about, and it could be that he's here to teach you more about trust. Wow. Building a compassionate relationship based on trust. But what I'm what I'm really getting is that is that the dog I see different things when I look in the card every time. It's like yeah. sometimes they change. So what <clears> I really <throat> get from this is the dog really staring at you. Mm -hmm. So the dog, it's almost like Barney is here to watch over you as you grow further. Right. He's fascinated by you. Barney is right. actually quite fascinated by you and how things are changing for you. Mm. And I would go back to a little bit like what you were saying at the beginning that you now feel that you are doing things like this interview with me and the other things you're doing mm -hmm. just simply because you want to do it, not yeah. because you feel like you've got to do it to make an income or oh, no. do it to make a difference. Or yeah. There's a reason like, oh, I've got to do this. Like, even if it's... No, I just want to do it. <laughs> yeah, if, if you shift away from that kind of... Yeah. Um, need yeah. into let's just play with this let's see what we can we can create then it yeah. becomes more about trusting that the universe yeah. will provide and I feel very much like this is yeah this is what this is showing you wow I love that and what what Barney's energy around you is here to mm -hmm. you with the PAW this is also quite strong because it is the mind body and the soul yeah a lot of understanding how you integrate the soul with the other aspects of the mm -hmm. body 
here to help you do this. Dogs are quite physical. They're quite 3D. Mm -hmm. Galactic in general. Dogs have like come down here to really be here and ground with us. Yeah. So they have links to star seeds, but yeah. they're really here. Yeah. Dogs are not so much here. They're yeah. not so grounded. They're no. not so physical with the earth. Like dogs mm -hmm. really benefit from having their feet on the earth. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this whole thing of how you integrate the, the physical. Mm -hmm. The, the the mind and soul mm -hmm. yeah i think that and that's just from one card <laughs> but yeah, we, could go on, we could go on because the water's churning in the background mm -hmm. there, are, there are some emotional things going on mm -hmm. that he is actually in front of so it's almost like barney's there to kind of like absorb these emotions from you and ground them for you he's kind of doing you a bit of a favor if you like oh that's incredible yeah but it, it, it might be a case of having a look that they're not churning too much because you'll notice that the the, the sacred geometry symbol here you've yeah. got that part yeah so where we're saying it was physical body and mm -hmm. soul like the, it's the physical it's almost the physical that is getting churned up with the emotion so there may be something there that barney's actually here to in a way ailments in you might start to improve as he is allowed to take your energy mm. out and ground it rather than using any limitations on him to stop him doing these grounding, which often look like bad behaviors, but really they're, they're doing us a favor <laughs> by grounding out our emotions. And if we stop that, we're actually limiting ourselves as well as the dog. So he did a full, he did a full classic when my friend was around last night. He's never quite gone that far before, but he was. He leapt up the so he leapt on the sofa to get something, and then he wanted it, so I gave it to him. A little while later, because it was plastic and he was ripping it up, I took it away from him. And then, in his mind, he thought it was still on top of the sideboard. So he thought, "Well, I'm just going to go and get it." And he went up there and he tried to walk on the top of the sideboard. And she looked at me and she said, "He's walking on top of the sideboard," and I just thought. So, <laughs> just like, you know, it's just like it's, oh, does it really matter? You oh, know, I'm so determined. I know <laughs> it was so funny, and they thought, well, mate, you know, the thing is, I didn't want to shout at him. I didn't want to shout. No. no. And and I was talking to her, and I didn't want to grab him, and I didn't want him to to think that he was bad because I think he's like running across there shouting at him for going on top of the sideboard. You know it's not a good thing so it was just sort of like calm and they took ages to get there before i went over and said come on bunny but then equally you know some people would react with a tap on the nose and that is really not i think you know would destroy his confidence doing things like that so yeah i mean to be this is all that's just old hat stuff that we did old in, stuff <laughs> dog training even i mean that's not even that's well it's 1930 before. isn't it <laughs> 1930 yeah, like even in traditional positive training you wouldn't be like that with a dog so no yeah, no i'm sure you do the, the, the best thing you could in the situation yeah. interesting that he was really chewing and grounding emotionally while your mum was there what was the item was it, it no it was a friend it was, oh, a friend. Friend. it was it was a plastic it was a plastic um toy from christmas that he'd never chewed oh, like from those plastic crackers from and then he just suddenly decided he wanted it he hadn't wanted it at christmas you know he hadn't <laughs> he's never touched it but because i was talking to her he decided that He's a book board now and he was going to go and get that. I didn't even know he knew it was up there, but he knew it was up there, you know. That's amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, he needed something to, to really yeah. chew on, didn't he? Yeah, and then I got him out another toy and he's fine. <laughs> but he, he's, he's a bit of a climber, you know. He can be a bit of a climber. You know, mm, like. Maybe that's a sign for you, that you're climbing up. <laughs> he could be. <laughs> it could be, uh, what's yeah. He show, what's he reflecting and showing you in that? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
Well, thank you for talking to me. That's wonderful. Thank you for coming on. It's been a brilliant interview. And obviously, your courses have got great potential. (laughs) (laughs) They've got potential for the owners to, the dog owners to learn a lot, you know, and be better with their animals. So, I mean, the dog changes, but the person they're like your life changes when you learn canine flow it's amazing it sounds brilliant okay caroline thanks very much for being my guest on natural co-creators and i'm sure we'll catch up soon thank you bye for now